When you complete this section, you should be familiar with the medical abbreviations you may see in your client's medical orders or prescriptions. I would also like you to know that there are a standard set of abbreviations, and you should never use any non-standard abbreviations when documenting in your client's record. Generally, it's best to write things out, so you are sure everyone who reads the note will understand, even if they're not familiar with medical abbreviations. It is very important that you do not use any abbreviations when writing the directions from a prescription label on the MAR. Copy the instructions exactly the way it appears on the medication label. As a medication assistance provider, you will see many medical abbreviations on prescriptions, doctor's orders, and in the medical history of the client. It is vital that you understand what is written and what medical professions are telling you. If you don't understand the jargon or the shorthand, ask. As medical professionals, we eat, sleep, and think in this shorthand in medical terminology. We're not showing off and trying to make people think we're so smart. It's just how we talk with each other. Sometimes you have to remind us that words like dyspnea and tapicnia and cyanosis aren't everyday words for most people. The abbreviations I have included in the next section are just scratching the surface, but I think they will give you a good foundation. I highly recommend that you study some medical terminology if you have a chance. MedEd America will be developing some YouTube videos to build your skills and knowledge base, all of which are free on our YouTube channel. First, let's look at some rules dealing with abbreviations. Then, I have prepared four slides with common abbreviations you may see in medical documents or on a prescription. I know I have said this before, but it goes for abbreviations also. If in doubt, check it out. Don't just guess and hope you're right. Doctor's orders and prescriptions contain medical abbreviations. I know you may be wondering why it's so important that you have a basic understanding of these common abbreviations. Doesn't the pharmacist translate them for you and write it on the medication label? Well, yes he does, but the people who work in the pharmacy are human and can make mistakes. In fact, dispensing error is one type of medication error. For this reason, you must be able to read the copy of the original prescription and match it to what is written on the label. You should do this each time you pick up a new prescription or receive a refill. Medical professionals use standard abbreviations in their documentation. The use of a non-standard abbreviation can cause miscommunication. The letters BM are the abbreviation for bowel movement. Can you imagine the confusion if somebody decided to use the letters BM as an abbreviation for before meals? For this reason, never use a non-standard abbreviation when you are documenting in your client's record. As I had mentioned before, a better practice is to write out the word rather than using an abbreviation. That way, if the person reading it, let's say a monitor, is not familiar with the abbreviation, they may be confused. If you do come upon an abbreviation you don't know, ask a licensed professional if there is one on staff. For prescriptions, a pharmacist or pharmacist assistants will be able to help you. Always ask. Don't ever guess and hope you're right. Remember, do not use abbreviations when transcribing orders to the MAR. On the next four slides, I will give you the definitions for common medical abbreviations. Sometimes we'll look at the abbreviation and think, where in the world did they come up with this? Medical terminology is based on Latin words, prefixes, and suffixes. So in many cases, the abbreviation is also based on Latin words or prefixes or suffixes. I would like you to take your time to study them and copy the definitions to your worksheet. When you have finished with the page, click on the icon to go to the next page. AC, before meals, as in taking medicine or doing a finger stick blood sugar test before meals. BID, twice daily, as in taking a medication twice daily. BP, blood pressure. C slash O, complaint of, the person's expressed concern. CAP, capsule. CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure, a treatment for sleep apnea, also known as CPAP. 
COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, CVA, cerebrovascular accident, a stroke, D slash C, discontinue. G, gram, unit of weight, GTT, drop, GI, gastrointestinal, GU, genitourinary, HS, at bedtime, hour of sleep, HA, headache, HTN, hypertension or high blood pressure, IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, a name for two disorders of the gastrointestinal GI tract, Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, IM, intramuscular, IU, international units. K, potassium, KCL, potassium chloride, MG, milligram, one one thousandth of a gram, 1,000 milligrams equals one gram, MCG, microgram, one one millionth of a gram, 1,000 micrograms equals one milligram, one million micrograms equals one gram, ML, milliliter, one one thousandth of a liter, N slash V, nausea or vomiting. MPO, nothing by mouth. OD, right eye. OS, left eye. OU, both eyes. PC, after meals. PO, peros, by mouth. PRN, when necessary or needed. SOB, short of breath. SQ, subcutaneous. TID, three times daily. TAB, tablet. TSP, teaspoon. QID, four times daily. The JACO Do Not Use list. Before you move on, I would like to spend a little time talking about the JACO Do Not Use list. The Joint Commission is a body that monitors and accredits hospitals, medical facilities, and several medical service providers. They are the clarent, formerly Del Marva, of the hospital world. In 2004, JACO created an official do not use list of medical abbreviations to reduce and prevent errors in patient care. You may still see some of the abbreviations, but as a whole, most of them are being phased out in patient records. The letter U was used as shorthand for the word unit. Potential problems include the mistaking the U for a zero, the number four, or CC. Units are commonly used in dosing insulin. One unit is a small amount but has a significant impact on a person's blood sugar. A 10 milliliter vial contains 1,000 units of insulin, so one ML, or CC, contains 100 units of insulin. If a person reads the abbreviation of 10 units of insulin as 10 cc's of insulin and injected the 10 cc's, it would be deadly. The only time you may come in contact with this situation is if you are copying orders on the MAR for the home health nurse who administers the person's insulin injection. Remember, you are not allowed to draw up or administer a person's insulin. In fact, you are not permitted to do a finger stick blood sugar test if it is linked to an insulin dose. IU is used as an abbreviation for international units, which is used to measure bioactive substances such as penicillin and vitamins. Potential problems include mistaking the IV route or the number 10. When I was in nursing school a thousand years ago, Q was used as a shorthand for every and D for day. So QD meant every day and QOD meant every other day. They could be mistaken for each other and you could be giving medicine twice as often as you should or half as much as you should. If you're not paying close attention, you can miss the decimal point when reading a whole number that is written 2.0 rather than 2. The danger comes in that there is a big difference between 2 milligrams and 20 milligrams. 
Never use a trailing zero unless it is used to demonstrate the level of precision, such as in a laboratory report, such as creatinine equals 1.0. On the flip side, you should always use a leading zero before the decimal. This technique will draw attention to the fact the number is a fraction, not a whole number. Again, there is a huge difference between 0.25 milligrams and 25 milligrams. 25 milligrams is 100 times stronger than 0 0.025 milligrams. That leading zero is extremely important to remember. We aren't going to discuss the morphine and magnesium sulfate abbreviations, since we will be writing them out on the MAR if we would be giving them. If for some reason your client was prescribed one of these medications, the pharmacist would have transcribed it to the label and the doctor should have written out the words on the prescription. Just take a few minutes to look over the additional abbreviations, acronyms, and symbols that JACO recommend that you don't use. The only ones we really may be tempted to use are the greater than, less than, and at sign. Just refrain from using them, write out the words, and prevent potential problems. You receive the following order. Amoxyl, 500 milligrams, take two cap POBID times 10 days. What does it mean? Perfect. Take two capsules by mouth twice daily for 10 days. I'm sorry, your answer is incorrect. The order is to take two capsules by mouth twice daily for 10 days. You receive the following order, Accuchex ACHS. What does it mean? Perfect. The order is for Accuchex before meals and at bedtime. I'm sorry, your answer is incorrect. The order is for Accuchex before meals and at bedtime. You receive the following order, Phenogrin. 12.5 milligrams PR every 8 hours PRN for severe vomiting. Encourage clear liquids PO. What does it mean? Perfect. The order is for 12.5 milligrams of phenergan given by the rectal route every 8 hours as needed for severe vomiting. Encourage clear liquids by mouth. I'm sorry, your answer is incorrect. The order is for 12.5 milligrams of phenergan given by the rectal route every eight hours as needed for severe vomiting. Encourage clear liquids by mouth. 